I'm Atuba George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now, I know we, we, we cut this in segments because of time, so uh, you can just watch it and get blessed. That's why I always tell you, try and listen to everything. Praise God. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, can we call for that daily bread? Are you ready? Join me right now and make this demand. Say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread is coming to me now in jesus name amen praise god so yesterday i was talking to you about um your the, 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 whatever is the, trying to tamper with your peace now your peace costs a lot yeah it's something you must settle it costs a lot jesus had to let go his peace so you can have peace it's that valuable jesus suffered the chastisement of our peace was upon him his peace was taken away from him so that you should have it and so it is in your realm right now that's why i'm concerned about and i told the lord began to talk to me last night you know two nights ago about how it's so important to um for you to for his children to live in peace and peace is the 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 hebrew word is shalom where you're all together it listen it doesn't mean you have all the money in the world but it just means that you're content and you're not content. You know what contentment is? Contentment is not poverty, mind you. Praise God. Contentment is not poverty. This is even between poverty and contentment. Because some people think to be content means to remain poor. No. No, no, no. Praise God. All right then. So, if where you are, you are not enjoying God's peace, you need to really begin to consider what to do next. First, like I was sharing with you yesterday, you need to understand what, where has your mind been? Because you need to be sure that you are not the architect of your problem. See that now? Because some people are married and then they complain about the other party all the time in their marriage and forget that they themselves have not taken responsibility for their own lives. That's why yesterday I was telling you first and foremost, how do you see yourself? How do you rate yourself? Do you see yourself as somebody who can just take anything? Do you see yourself as someone who can be treated as a doormat? Now, you see, there is humility and then there is meekness. Especially meekness. Meekness doesn't mean foolishness. Actually, in meekness, the difference between meekness and foolishness is when you know perfectly who you are, what you want, and then you subject yourself willingly for a moment to accept what you're not. That's meekness. I say this for a moment, it's not something you do forever. It's usually for a moment. Now, when it now becomes prolonged and you don't know what to do, then it's, no, it's not meekness, it's foolishness. You really didn't know who you are. As I know who I am, I know what I can do. If I can just, the, the day I will. How long have you been going through this? Four years now. And you're still saying the day I will. Sorry, you don't know who you are. No, you don't. You don't. You don't. Praise God. You don't. It's not meekness. You are simple. That's what the, that's what the book of Proverbs calls such people. They are simple people. And another word for sim simplicity is foolishness. I'm sorry to tell you. So you need to understand, am I foolish or am I simple? Now, you deserve better. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You deserve better. And the earlier you state it. Now, some of you already know this. But then you're just saying, where do I start from? Hey, hey, 
you start from first and foremost, start treating yourself right. Start treating yourself well. Because sometimes people have been in an abusive relationship. Now, when I mean abusive relationship, not just husband and wife or, or um, man and woman kind of relationship. Also, work relationship, um, business relationship. You know, people allow others to just abuse them anyhow. Now, when I say abuse, not just words or not just beating them, or them, how they allow themselves to be treated. You must determine what gives you peace. Because, now, let me show you something in, thank you, Jesus, Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. verse 14 Ephesians chapter 2 verse 14 says for he is our peace referring to Jesus for he is our peace who had both who had made both one and had broken down the middle wall of partition between us having abolished in his flesh the enmity even the law of commandment contained in ordinance for to make in himself of twin one new man so making peace now he says he is our peace now he didn't leave this peace thing to just come to you he took it upon himself now notice first and foremost he gave up his peace so that we will have peace now in us having the peace he became our peace now that's how solid our peace is solid i'm telling you i don't know what you meditate on truly i don't know now these are the things i meditate on and and i told you the end of your meditation must always be a decision so now jesus died he was chastised for my peace and, and that means his peace was taken away. You know, he said in John, he said, my peace I give to you. I, I shared that with you last week. My peace I give to you, okay? So he has given me his peace. I've accepted his peace. So what is his peace? He comes here now to say that he is my peace. Ah, so now he didn't give me peace and walked away. So somebody can come and steal the peace from me. He became my peace. Uh -huh. Now, listen. Did he say he will never leave us? He will never forsake us? Yeah. Now, he is our peace. Dwelling with us. Dwelling in us. Brothers and sisters, why shouldn't I have peace? Why shouldn't things work out for me? Why? So, if, if, if I'm, uh, what I'm sharing with you is something you need to take action about now. Why am I not enjoying peace? Why am I not at peace with myself? Why am I not enjoying my marriage? Why am I not enjoying my job? Why am I not enjoying the peace that Jesus is to me? Find out. And the first thing you must check is yourself. Where is your mind? If your mind is on another person's marriage, if your mind is on another person's way of living, see that now? Now that's your, where your mind is. And so because that's where your mind is, your peace is disturbed, then it's nobody's fault that you're not at peace. You need to first of all take your mind off all those places because that's what troubles a lot of people sometimes. They compare themselves with others. Oh, this person have bought three cars. I've not even had a bicycle. Ah, ah, I can't be at peace. I can't be at peace. I can't be at peace. No, sir. No. That's not the issue. See that? That's not the issue. The issue for you first and foremost, are you where God wants you to be? Because he's the same God, and, and, and hear me, hear me. He's the same God that your, the people you call your mates, 
They can buy the first car, they can buy the second car, they can buy the third car. See? And, and they bought those three cars in the space of maybe five years. And all these five years, the same number of years, you haven't gotten any car. This same God, in the sixth year, when this person is having his three cars, can give you four cars in one year. That's who God is. <laughs> oh yeah, that's who God is. But it's wrong when you begin to sit down and compare yourself with someone else in this regard. And say, because I've not made the kind of advancement they have made, then maybe something is wrong with me. No, sir. No. Always check yourself based on what God has said to you. Now, if God has said nothing to you, then you, you have not even placed yourself in the first place uh, to receive his peace. So where's your mind if he has not spoken to you? So what has he said concerning your marriage? Now, it's important you take those things before him and say, Lord, okay, you know what? You said this to me, you said this to me, and because you said these things to me, that's why I got myself involved with this. That's why I made the decision. See, I always say this. The reason for the word of God coming to us, the reason for dreams, visions from God, the reasons for the preaching is for you to make, be able to make quality decisions. God is helping you to make quality decisions. See, now your own mindset should be framed around those quality thoughts. Dreams will give you thoughts. The revelation of God's word will give you thoughts. You understand what I'm saying? Now, when you look at all these thoughts, and I'll give you an example. If you hear from God and God tells you that by the end of this year, I'm going to open a financial door for you and you're going to have, you're going to be swimming in millions of dollars, for example. Like, okay. And you believe him. Now, you just realize that maybe there are people you're owing some money. You know, they come to you, you know, and it's like, you know what? Um, I know I owe you some money, but can you please wait till the first week of next month? I'm going to sort it out. Why are you telling the person first week of next month? Because you have heard a word that said to you, by the end of this month, this is going to happen. And you believe that word. So now you took a decision based on that word that came to you. You had a dream and you believe that dream that this is where you belong. And you wake up in the morning like, wow, I believe that dream. You take decision based on that dream that you had. Remember, Joseph had a dream. Pharaoh had a dream. Joseph interpreted the dream to Pharaoh. It was all in the realms of dream. Now, what if Joseph was lying to Pharaoh? What if Joseph concocted that whole story about the, the, the seven years, you know, and, and what if the interpretation was fake? But because the king, the Pharaoh, believed Joseph, he took a decision based on Joseph's interpretation of his dream. They got, you see now, Joseph being in Egypt changed the economic policy of Egypt going forward by interpreting Pharaoh's dream. They had to put in the law that the, the nation is going to save this amount of grain from the harvest that is going to come. They had to put it in their law. You get what I'm saying? Now, a whole nation changes focus because of a dream that the king had. Now, that's how we live our life. All these things are to aid us to make the right decision. Now, one of the decisions you must make in life is never to suffer in life. Suffering, now like I said earlier, there is a momentary suffering, that's normal, but not a perpetual suffering. And you need to take those decisions now and early so that the Lord will help you by himself. You see, sit down and evaluate yourself. And really ask yourself, what am I worth? I'm sitting here and I'm telling you, you are worth Jesus Christ. 
He was giving so that you will live. So your peace is worth his peace. If your peace doesn't measure up to his peace, you are being cheated. Don't accept it. Don't accept it. Who should I fight? Who should I complain to? First, go back to the Lord. Say, Lord, this is not what we planned. So I'm asking you now, what do you want me to do? Now, as simple as that is, it must be resolved in your heart. Whatever you tell me to do, I will do. Some of your marriage have been so terrible because you've not made this decision. You've not even gone before the Lord. So, so ah, you know, some people are just too afraid. I tell people this all the time. As a child of God, your marriage, your job must be in God's hands. And if it is in God's hands, you shouldn't be afraid to let it fall. That's the truth. If you find yourself so afraid of letting your marriage fail, I mean, you know what I mean by that? You are too afraid. You, you, you're suffering. You're being maltreated. I said, hey, what are you doing? No, I don't want to. I don't want my marriage to fail. Then you see, you have a wrong concept of life. That's the truth. You don't even love yourself. So you don't know what is holding your marriage. You must get to that point where you just know that if this marriage is going to fall, where is it going to fall to? It's going to fall into the hands of the Lord because he's the one that I've been trusting since. So you know what? Let it fall, praise God. Yeah, let it fall. Because you see, the moment you're dealing with fear, or letting fear control you, you've lost the battle already. Oh, oh, you're going to wake up years later and realize that you made a terrible mistake years ago. I'm telling the truth. You don't, you don't force people to like you. You don't have to force someone to live with you. No, you don't. You're a child of the Most High God. You are fine. You are fine. Because sometimes you're talking, hey, but, but if, I, if, I, if I go, where do I go to? Nobody's telling you to go anywhere. We're telling you, go to the Lord. <laughs> go to the Lord. Now, now you see, you find, ah, well, if I pray now, what if God, what if God? He will tell you the truth. And whatever he tells you to do, he will back it up. And guess what? He's got your best interest at heart. If he commanded you into that marriage, he's got the best interest in that marriage at heart. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to pray. Don't be afraid to go before the Lord. Say, Lord, this thing is not working. I've been trying to hold this thing together, but then I, I, my hands are not even strong enough. So you know what, Lord? I leave it to you. If you cannot hold it together, then it shouldn't be held in the first place. See that? That's, that's, that should be your attitude in life. If God cannot hold it, just quit trying to hold it. It will break. You only have wasted your time. But get to that point where you say, Lord, this thing is in your hands. How do you know it's in your hands? Is it every marriage that's in God's hands? No, sir. No, 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 no. How do you know it's in God's hands? First and foremost, how did it begin? Did it begin in God? Did God usher into that marriage? Two, now being in the marriage, what have God told you? Because his word is progressive. If you heard God five years ago about your job, and today you're not hearing him again about your job, you better start thinking where you are. Same thing with your marriage. If God have not spoken to you about your marriage for so long, then you better wonder, where am I? See, so sometimes people begin to misbehave and, and we begin to blame others. It's your fault. You did this. You did that. But then you forget that you as a person have not received life where your marriage is concerned. You've not received life where your job is concerned. And that's one thing you need to start practicing about yourself every day. My time is up. I'm going to continue on this tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye.